Hello ladies. Um, I was asked to do an instructional video before we actually do our pour and paint party uh, because it just takes so long to mix your paints up and I can understand why we just want to eliminate a lot of questions. So the first thing that you want to do is uh, prepare your area. You want to protect where you're going to pour. You want your area to be level um, and then you want to protect it. I have these pads down, but uh, you can use um, a trash bag, cut it up, put your trash can, your trash bag down, and then put paper towel down just so that the paint has somewhere to, you can catch your paint, it has somewhere to absorb. You also want to prepare your canvas. I, um, anybody that picked up canvases from me, I included push pins, little push pins. You can put these in each corner of your canvas. You want your canvas to be raised up off the surface so the paint has somewhere to go once you start to pour. Now, I did go ahead and pre-make up most of my paints. And you want the consistency to be like uh, melted ice cream. Uh, that is 90% of your pour, is getting the consistency of your paint right. If your paint is not all the same thickness, uh, you'll lose a color. It will drop to the bottom and then all the the thinner colors will go right over it and then you won't see your yellow at all and you're like where's my yellow at it's dropped to the bottom so um we mix our paint with just water i'm just mixing it with water when you get um into it a little bit more you can use a pour medium but for right now we're just going to use water i got my colors and then you i say at least three colors at least three this one is kind of runny. Some paints are thicker than others. Uh, when they're thick, you have to thin them out. When they're thin, you have to add more paint. So it's still not running off of my stick like it should. So I'm going to add a little bit more water. Just a little bit at a time. You don't need a lot because then you'll get your paint to runny and you'll have to add more paint. So we want to do it little by little until it starts to run off your stick. So give me a minute, we'll get this right. I just want to say that I appreciate the opportunity to do this for you guys. I love this group to death. Tara, you are a godsend. Ladies in this group help each other, uplift each other, and I couldn't be more happier it, oops, it is such a godsend. If you get some on your canvas, that is okay because you're going to pour over it anyways. We're getting to the consistency that we need. Just a little bit more. I told Tara I never videotaped anything like this before in my life. She said, girl, you need to go to YouTube. You need to do some YouTube videos. Uh, instead of me looking at people on YouTube, you need to do some YouTube. I said, girl, we're going to get there together okay so I think that is what I want if you guys can see that it's running off my stick leaving a little mound on top of the paint surface which I want now the next step is to layer it in your cup so if you're gonna do three colors then you need four cups we need a cup to flip and this is what the technique I'm going to teach you today is called a flip cup. A flip cup. Because you'll see in a minute, you want to layer your paints in your cup. Just run right on top of the other. And you want to keep that same order that you did. If you want more of one color, put more of that color in there. There's no rules. You could actually switch up the order if you wanted to. I'm just trying to give you some kind of idea on what we do. I've never worked with this color combination before, I think it'd be pretty. And 
And you just keep layering your colors. Until you're done. I don't know how this is going to turn out. I hope it turns out good. Not all pores turn out good. Some of them have to start over. And that's fine. You can scrape it. And you can start over if you want. You can let it dry. And then you can pour over your canvas if you want. There's not really... Let me see. I try to get all my paint, honey. But this is... 90% of your pour is getting your paints right and then trying to decide what technique you're going to use. And get it all in there. Alright, and now this is where the term flip cup comes in at. Let's see, I try to get all my paint. I'm not wasting nothing. Okay. So, you're going to take your canvas. Let me stand up. You're going to take your canvas and you're going to flip it over the top of your cup. Hold it and then flip. And then put your canvas back down. Okay. Now you're going to give it a minute because you want all your paint to drop down. Want all your paint to drop down. I'm going to give it just a second. Excuse me, I'm getting up out my chair. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Now, some people just lift the cup straight up. If you have a bigger canvas, you can lift it and drag it. Drag it out. And that's called a flip and drag. But we're just going to lift it because our canvas is so small. We're not going to drag it out because we don't really have a lot of room. Okay. And. Woo, I'm nervous. Okay, here we go. All right. A lot of people um, in the art community say that pour, when you pour, it wastes a lot of paint. Well, you do. You do waste some paint, but I think it's a pretty outcome when you use the right colors. So you want to manipulate the paint so that it gets to all four corners. And some of these paints, some of it ran all together. And sometimes you can muddy. It can get look muddy when you put too many colors alike together. But I think that green and shimmering in there is pretty. You see the shimmer in there? And when you pour. And this is why you want to protect your area because you do lose a lot of paint. And then you want to work your corners, so to speak. If your paint isn't reaching your corners, you want to work your corners and your sides. If you want to put a drizzle or something in there, you're like, you know what, I, don't, I want some more green in there. Take more green off your cup and just dribble it in there. There's no rules to say that you can't work it. Work some green in there. And then you want to stretch it out a little bit, you can do that too. Also, you want your work area to be free of a lot of air. If you um, got a fan on, your paint is going to start to dry up and it's not going to move like you want it. So you don't want a fan right directly over you. You want to pick out any kind of lumps or bumps or anything that you got. A toothpick will do just fine if you got bumps or lumps in there. But you just keep pouring until you get the composition that you like. And then if you're straight with that, then you let it dry. You also want to pour in an area where you can allow your paint to dry. Usually, if it's thicker paint, you want to dry at least three weeks. 
um, if you move it and put it up in a place that has a lot of air, it will dry too fast and then it will start to crack. So you want to keep it somewhere where it's drying naturally on its own and it will dry for about, probably for about two weeks because this is not going to be a real thick paint. It's going to be kind of thin. So that's it. The colors that you use, lady, it's all up to you. Um, that's my tutorial. I hope it was informative. Um, when we decide on a for sure date, we will post it. And then if you guys could have most of your paints mixed before we actually go live and do our um, thing, that would be great. If you have any questions on what I did today, you guys can um, hit me up. It's Lisa Tucker. Uh, message me. Uh, there's a couple of ladies that still have some canvases to pick up, um, but that's it. I enjoyed you guys. Thank you. And I am sipping. Thank you, ladies.